In this video, I'm going to talk about retopologizing a face. This is all part of a series where I make this stylized female face. Check the links in the description for the whole playlist. Also, if you like what I do, then you might want to check out the other playlists on this channel and my website for more great content. Now, if you haven't heard of retopology or topology in general, then do check out my complete playlist on the subject. In the playlist, I have a video called Retopology, a detailed guide, and that will take you through what topology is, add-ons that will help you with retopology, and I talk about the setup and techniques retopologizing this dragon model. I've also got other useful videos in there as well, and I will place this one in that playlist. So this video focuses on retopology of a face. Now, if we take a look at my topology, if I press tab to go into edit mode, you can see that the topology is not actually great. And you can see that by the edge flow, we should really have an edge flow around the eye and around the mouth. And there's far too many faces underneath the nose and the ears look pretty bad as well. However, it's not completely awful. It does the job nicely and it allows me to take the high poly information from my high detailed sculpt and put it onto a lower poly in order to paint it which is all I wanted from this model. The add-on I was using for that was the Quad Remesher, which is a paid for add-on. You can get a free program called Instant Mesh, but it really isn't as good as Quad Remesher. So it's done a half decent job. Manual retopology at the moment does a better job. So let's go into that now. The first thing you'll probably want to do is get a reference image like this. This is great because it's from Sketchfab and it's from 0.5Y. This gives you a really great look at the edge flow around the shape and is a good example of topology that will be suitable for animation and generally suits the contours of the face. I'll place the link to this in the description, but it's very handy to have a detailed model like this as reference. So with that Sketchfab model as a guide on another screen, I'll come back into Blender with my high poly mesh just here, so face high poly, and I'll want to create my new mesh to go on top of it. Now I'm going to go fairly quick through this, as this is more just a reminder of what I've already gone through in a previous video in the playlist. I'll shift right click to move my 3D cursor on top of the face just there, shift A to add mesh and then plane. Let's scale that down and move it into position in front of the head. Move it fairly close, but on top of the head, not touching or overlapping. I'm also off to one side like this because I'm going to mirror it to the other side. I'll rename it as well, face low poly two, and let's add my mirror modifier. So across the spanner, add modifier mirror, now it's mirroring in itself, so I need to use the mirror object of the face. That is assuming that your face has its object center in the middle of the face, and it will be mirroring around that point. So now we have our mirror, except when I cross over, they overlap each other, so make sure clipping is turned on. So now with those two there, I can go into edit mode with tab. I'll get rid of my sidebar with N, and I need to turn snapping on so these points snap to the face behind. So I make sure the magnet there is highlighted blue, come across to the snap to objects here, and I want to choose face. Now you want to make sure that project individual elements is on. That means that each of the points, when I move the whole face, each of the points will snap to the face behind it. Also, you want to have a line rotation to target, so faces will point in the direction of the normals. And this one's optional, but it will snap to itself. That can be useful, but not so much. We also want to affect the rotation and the scale. So when I rotate this, oh, I've got proportional edit on, so I'll turn that off. But when I rotate this, you can see these points have snapped to the object. Same when I scale it as well. Now it's a little bit tricky to see because this face here is inside my stylized head. So we want it to be pushed out really slightly. We use another modifier for that. So add modifier, shrink wrap modifier. That will make sure all these points are kind of projected and stick onto our head. We'll need to highlight the target. So I'll get my picker here and choose the head as the target. And for the snapping mode, I choose above surface and just bring the offset up. Take a quick look at what that looks like and how high above the surface that is but 0.01 in my case is absolutely fine. That's a good distance. What I find helpful as well is to turn this button on here, which is on cage, so I see the results of the modifier, not the original. So I'd be looking at the original there, and the results are here. So now I can go in, select my points, and E to extrude, maybe go to edges, and E to extrude out this way, making sure that I've got a good eye on my reference image. To speed things up, you can press Control and right click, and that quickly creates a face automatically. You can select multiple edges. So I'll select that one and control click this one and G to grab and move those down a bit into position. And we can slowly build up the topology for this shape. Now the important thing in my mind is to get the edge flow. So these colored bits here, put those in first and then fill the spaces in between afterwards. To start a new separate edge flow, choose a face and you can just shift D to duplicate and move that into position, rotate it, scale it if you have to and then I can start working on the area around the eye. If I want to fill a circle, select two edges and press F to fill. So we always start by doing these main edge flows first and then fill the spaces in between afterwards. 
Now in my reference, there's a edge loop going all the way around here and down to the bottom chin. And I want it to join up with this one going around the forehead. So if I rotate this one and extrude it out, I can then take this one and restart my edge flow along here. That's one of the hardest things to understand about this process, about when two edge flows meet like this and they kind of collide. And what you often end up with is a pole. Let's say I fill these two in, so select these two and press F to fill. And incidentally, I can go all the way around here by just selecting this edge here and pressing F to fill, and that will go all the way around. And at this point, we've got a pole. So a vertex that hasn't got four edges going into it. You try and minimize poles as much as possible, but they're also often important for attaching edge loops together. This edge loop continues all the way down to the bottom of the chin here. Another example of a pole would be here, so I can extrude out from this edge. Ideally, you're counting, so you're working out the right amount of edges to match up with other edges. So as I go around here, I'm matching these up. But let's say I accidentally put an extra point in. It's not the end of the world, is I can just click on that one and press Control X to dissolve. And to fill these two in, I can select these two, F to fill, select this one, and keep pressing F all the way around, and that should fill in all the way to the end. And as you can see, I've put in an extra one by accident. And at this point, you need to decide, do you want an extra one here to help you with the topology of the nose, or do you want to take one away from here? So I'll undo that last step. Control R to do a loop cut in there, because I think it will be helpful for the nose to have an extra one, and fill that in. Ideally, you'll just look at your reference and count up as best you can. Now, it might start getting difficult to see the gray on gray, so you can come up to the viewport shading options here and choose random. That will give your retopology a different color. So hopefully you can see from there how you can build up and slowly retopologize a face. The main thing is not to copy what I'm doing here because this was just the rough example, and actually I'll need to delete this face loop here because we need more space in here to continue up around here for the shape. So delete then faces. So make sure you're looking at your reference and trying to copy that as close as possible. Don't worry if yours is different, your shape may be different to your reference, and you may feel that in this particular case, the nose and the lips are quite big, so they may need more topology than your reference. So hopefully that's enough of a guide to help you. If you're still confused, then do look at the playlist for more hints, tips, and guidance. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.